Okay, in this video, we're going to install JNS3. And we're going to use JNS3 to connect and start up a couple routers uh, via a hypervisor that's running on an external machine uh, that has Ubuntu desktop running on it. First thing we're going to do is, is download JNS3. You can just Google it or go to gns3.net. And we're going to install this, download and install it onto our laptop. So we click on the download link. You can uh, download whatever version you need. I'm running on a 64 bit Windows 7 machine, so that's the copy I'm going to do. I've already got Win, PCAP, and Wireshark installed on this machine, so I'm just going to download the, uh, the source. You can get the all-in-one if you like. Now I've got it downloaded, and I put it right onto my C drive. I just created a folder called GNS3, then I extracted the file that I had downloaded uh, within that folder, and it uh, extracted to the 64-bit folder. And then you got all the files in here. Nothing to actually install. I just run the gns3.exe file, just double click on it, and that'll start up the topology, start up the GUI. And the first step here is uh, we're going to just go through some of the settings. So click on edit, click on preferences. <coughs> You can browse through some of these tabs. Under Dynamips, by default, enable Ghost iOS support is enabled. Um, that, on some machines, causes issues. So if, if you have issues down the road, you could always uh, disable that. But I wouldn't leave it enabled for now. And then I like to just click on Test Settings. It'll give you some errors if there's something that's not configured correctly. And if it looks good, it'll be green and say successful. All right. Now we're going to go into the iOS images and hypervisors. And we're going to define how we're going to connect to the, the external hypervisor, which is running the Ubuntu desktop on another machine, a more beefier machine. So we're going to put in the IP address of that Ubuntu desktop machine that's running Dynamips. So you can, I've got it to a remote desktop to, uh, do it here. So you can right click and uh, on, on the network and click on uh, the connection information. If you don't recall what the IP address was. Now in my scenario, I've got uh, Ubuntu running on a completely different LAN. I have a firewall in between. It's all physical and yeah, to reduce complexity, you may want to keep the machines on the same LAN, but I've already tested routing and connectivity between these machines, so I know I don't have any issue. So I'll put in the IP address of the uh, Linux machine. The port it was going to be listening to is 7200. That's correct. The other ports look okay. Now we're going to need to uh, define a working directory that's going to be relative to the other machine to the Ubuntu machine. So we're going to create a working directory on that box. I had downloaded Dy Dynamips into a folder um, beneath my home folder called GNS. So we'll make a, uh, a new folder in there called temp. And we'll just create that as the, uh, make that the working directory. So temp is created. So these files are all relative to Ubuntu. So if you type PWD, it'll give you your present working directory. Make sure that's what you've got typed in here. So in the iOS images tab, <clears throat> this is where we're going to uh, define where the image is actually located. And again, this will be relative 
to Ubuntu running Dynamips. Now we actually keep the Cisco iOS images on the host machine. Now remember Ubuntu is actually running as a guest machine under VirtualBox, which is why in our previous video we actually created a share uh, between the guest machine and the host machine. So this is going to be a uh, folder we're looking for. Here we go. And here are iOS images that are actually stored on the host machine. So we need to put that exactly. We need to put this folder in here in the image file field. I'll try to paste it. Eh, I must not have the copy and paste enabled between uh, the remote desktop and uh, my laptop here. But that's okay. I'll just type it in. And then, of course, you got to put the name of the iOS image. Now, you'll want to use your own um, iOS images. This is not something you can download from the GNS site, so you can get those from uh, you know the normal sources. All right, I was able to copy and paste it from another uh, from another resource that I had here on my desktop. Made that easy. <clears throat> oh, oops! I gotta I gotta assign the actual hypervisor there. There we go. So it knows to find that image on the Ubuntu desktop that we defined on the other tab. So that's how we defined that specific uh, device, which is a Cisco 3700 series router. Let's change these sizes of uh, these windows so we can try to be able to see everything on one screen. So we're going to start up Dynamips. Let's get the correct uh, syntax here. So it's dash. Uh, I had an issue and I had to reboot the had to reboot Ubuntu for whatever reason. It wasn't starting up the hypervisor. So anyways, I didn't do anything else. Just rebooted it and it's, it's working just fine. So it's now listening on port 7200. So let's switch back to GNS. Click cancel and let's drop a router. That's a thir uh, Cisco 3700 series router. If you look at the right, uh, R1 is red, router one is red. And the hypervisor did respond that we've connected to it. So we're starting it up. I'm gonna start up the router now and we can just watch what's happening on the uh, left side there in Ubuntu. It's trying to load up the file and the uh, system resources is going up to 100%. It's what we expect. Just got to wait for this uh, router to continue to boot up and then we will adjust the idle PC value so we can try to maintain um, you know, uh, less than 100% usage on the CPU. So according to Ubuntu, according to Dynamips, the router has been started. And if you look at uh, back over here at the system resource monitor, it's hitting 100% as expected. And we could start up the console on the router and see, uh, so it shows us uh, booting up and now we are finally at a command line. We can close that down. So let's go back to the router now and set up the idle PC. So if you just right click on the router and select idle PC. <clears throat> so if you look back in Dynamips, it says, you know, please wait while we're gathering statistics. It'll just give it a little bit of time. It doesn't take too long. And it'll present you hopefully with a number of values that you can choose. And we're provided a list. And they suggest you, you pick the one that's got the asterisk next to it. So we'll just go ahead and grab the first one. Now, sometimes what we're looking for here is for the CPU value to drop. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes you have to sometimes you have to do this a few times and um, or you can always go back if they gave you an you know, initial list like you see over here. Um, you can copy and paste those values into the router uh, iOS config box right there under, you know, you click on the iOS images and hypervisors and you see the idle PC value. So you can just copy and paste that right back into that field. 
Um, or you can always right click on the router again and start that process all over again. You may have to do it a few times before you get one that, that works. Actually, we got kind of lucky here with one uh, right off the bat. And um, we're going to go ahead and shut down GNS3 and let's go ahead and shut down Dynamips and just prove that this should uh, work with the new idle PC values. So we'll start Dynamips again. Let's restart GNS3. We'll go ahead. Yeah, CPU value looks good. But we haven't started any routers yet. So if we go back into the iOS and hypervisors and just take a look at it, see, make sure nothing's changed. The idle PC is still uh, as we had uh, configured it. If you look at these images, they are associated with a specific platform. So we can drop, uh, you know, a few of these routers in here. <laughs> and something you want to make sure of is when you're running um, on another, here, we got our Ubuntu guest running on a host system and my host system went to sleep. So... <laughs> Had to go back and uh, yeah, fix that. So they had to get everything restarted. So now let's go ahead and drop routers. So we'll drop uh, three or four routers in here. <clears throat> now each one of these routers, uh, Cisco IOS is actually running on the Ubuntu machine, not on my laptop. So CPU uh, resources are not being affected on my laptop. They are being affected only on the Ubuntu machine. If you look at the routers on the right, they're all red. Um, we've asked to start them up. And as they turn green, they're starting up and they should be booting up. We can click on the console icon, which will open up all the consoles. And if you look over at the system resources, they're at 100%. But as soon as they're done booting up, <clears throat> we should see the resources drop. Let's drag one of those consoles over here. We can see that it's you know it's still working, it's still doing stuff, and the CPU resources will will remain quite high until it's finished. And there we go. So all four of these, this is the fourth router. The fourth one to actually start up. All four are done booting up. CPU resources have reduced quite a bit. You can play with this even more, change the idle PC value a few more times and try to get the CPU resources to come down even lower. But but this is this is okay. I'm I'm happy with the way it is. I've got four routers uh you know running. <clears throat> so I'm happy with that. So my next video will set up a, a simple topology and um, you know make sure we can uh, run some packets from one point to the next thank you and see you next time